We have a load sensing Volkswagen proportioning valve. This is off a German built 1980 Rabbit. And these valves are real common leakers. But then again, it is from 1980. Um, we can usually We build these. There's the uh, the lever. It varies your load on the valve. Bubble bubble flare ports. And we'll clean this up and uh, replace pull it apart. Clean it up. Replace some O-rings. Put her all back together. Test it. Make sure she doesn't leak anymore. And hopefully we'll have another happy customer. So, here we go. So, first thing we have to do is we have to get this nut off. Now, you can see, this is just a tin nut. And it has a lot of rust and corrosion on it. So, we hit some PB blaster. And then some brake clear clean off. Clean off the PB blaster. We're going to go over to the sand blaster. We're going to blast around these threads to get all of this crud off of here. And we gotta save this nut and keep from rounding it off. There, a little round it off there already, but we have to save this. All right, so we finally got this off. The washer and the, the tin nut are embedded with some kind of locking compound. Looks like you put bedding compound on there. So that was on top, that was on there, and it was all held together. Pretty tightly with this green bedding compound. So here's what's left of the snap ring or the wire goes around this rubber to hold that on. See, there's the groove. We'll clean that up. Here's the rubber piece. We can clean that up. And then the top, we'll just use a piece of wire to put that back on and then there's a uh, clip in here pull that clip and we'll see if this piston wants to move but you see we did save the tin nut which is really important because yeah these aren't anywhere to be found in the special washer we'll just use some loctite on that and we put that back together we'll clean that lever up in a sandblaster We'll use get a new piece of wire, put on that, and so we'll try to get this clip out, and we'll see, go from there. All right, so we have to get this piston out here. So we plug this port, which goes into the piston. Put the zerk fitting in here. Put in our grease gun. And we're going to use some hydraulic pressure to press that out. I don't know if I can do it one-handed. Let's see. There it comes. Yep. Nope. Look at all the water coming out of this. That's why this one's seized up. So we're going to have to find a plug for that other one so we can continue pushing this out. All right, the grease gun worked. Here we uh, welded up a nut, put it in there for a plug. We pumped it full of grease, and she came right out. Now that centerpiece comes out of there too, so we'll have to see if we can save that. We'll have to emery cloth that. But uh, let's see kind of wet down in here. Pulling out water. Then we can side this. Here's the grease. All right, here's the valve. Here's a lip seal here. Here's another lip seal over here. Where they cleaned up a little bit. And then the uh, O-ring on that one. This slides over. This piece is in the bore. This piece is supposed to slide back and forth in here. 
and it was seized. So we'll clean all these surfaces up. This is aluminum. This is where we get the leak from because this bore wears. You can see there's some wear in this bore, or at least some dirt. So we're going to clean that up real good so it slides. Clean it up, polish it. We'll polish this so it slides in here. I'll have to see if I have any more lip seals, two lip seals and an O-ring. This is where you get your leak from. All that water in there seeds are up. We're gonna drop these in a little container of brake fluid to keep these seals alive. Because we hit a brake cleaner, which is a big no-no. You -no. see this one's broke. So uh, soak those in brake cleaner, plus it'll clean them up too. Here we have them in a little container. We're just gonna Put some brake fluid in there, cover them up, and we'll just let it sit overnight. It'll clean a lot of that off of there too. It's a good good cleaner for gunk. So uh, those are done for now. So got a lot of the grease out of there. So now all this end, we have this nut to take off, and then this other half should come out. Alright, so we crack this nut loose. And usually there's a copper washer on here. Not on this one. And then there's your proportioning part of the valve for the probably for the rear. And then there's another piston in there we gotta get out. Alright, and here's your shuttle valve. A little bit of grease on it. But two more cup seals. So there's not really too many O-rings on these. These are a lot of cup seals, which last a pretty long time. And then there you can see straight through the body. So we're going to clean this body up, degrease it, blast it, clean it up, get all the grease and everything off of it. There's the uh, rubber weep hole. There's supposed to be a weep hole in there with a rubber stopper in it. Just in case too much pressure gets in there. It's supposed to leak past that. But all right, here she is. Cleaned up with some uh, cleaner. Still pretty rusty yet. So we're gonna put this into the media blaster. Make it all look nice and new. We finish some of these bores. So they're cleaned up. And we'll take it from there. Okay, she's all cleaned up. Got all, most of that rust off of there. Bores are cleaned up. We use Q-tips and alcohol. We keep cleaning until they come out clean and not black. So now we're gonna tape it up and Give her a shot of paint. All right, here's the uh, proportion valve load lever. I'm gonna clean this up and blast it and paint it. And okay, here's the shuttle valve. We pulled the old lip seals off of it. The U cup seals, and we have some new replacements here. These are, of course special rubber for brake fluid and we polish everything you see yeah this is polished this ring and this ring and this side isn't over here it's still dull this is polished this rides back and forth in the bore so we polish and clean that up and then we'll put our o-rings on our lip seals you have to pay attention to how the old ones come off the open end lip always goes towards the pressure side, so these will both face out when you get them in this groove. And there it is, both the lip seals on. You can see the lips are pointing out on either end. The pressure is coming in from either end to push it back and forth. And we'll move on to the other piece. Okay, here's the sleeve. This is all aluminum. See, it's got some dirt on it, especially in this groove here. 
from the O-ring, took the O-ring out. A lot of dirt in here, some there, and then the inside has some. So we're gonna polish this up the whole way around, put a new O-ring on it, and then that piece will be finished. Alrighty, there's our aluminum bushing, the new O-ring, polished out the, the bore. Cleaned it up, so that, that's good to go. All right, here's the load sensing end. This is the piece that goes through the here, slides back and forth. And then there's a U-cup here and a U-cup here. And we'll clean this up, we'll polish this. There's no nicks on it. We place the two O-rings, U-cup seals, and we'll be good to go. All right, we have the load sensing shuttle valve together. Got the new cup seals on. Now this cup seal here originally came out being on the other way with the opening facing out. But on cup seals, you want the opening facing towards the pressure side. So when you get oil behind this seal, it pull, pushes it out against and seals. That's another reason why these leaked because from the factory they had to seal on backwards so we're going to put this seal on the right way so when the pressure comes through it down through down in in this way and around it's going to push against this lip seal which will be in here and it should seal that up and that's how it slides in together you can see it slides very easily now and then this will go down into the body this seal is put on the factory way but by switching that cup seal around it'll keep the leak down when this is pressurized in here along with this o-ring but this is where the area is it leaks a lot we polished the piston here and there, there is a little bit of play, but this seal should take it up. That's how it was in there when we pulled it out, just like that, but it was seized. So that's how we're going to put it back together. All right. Here's the valve body. So we're going to assemble this. These are all soaking in brake fluid. And that one goes in there. There's that. Is in the middle and this here will drop in here this will drop into here okay you see we put that in now we had to take this o-ring off this is why you save all your old parts the original was still in good shape wasn't torn ripped or nicked this is just slightly too thick it wouldn't go down in without it being cut so we in this case we had to reuse the old o-ring that's why you always save your old parts being this is a german made part it's probably a metric size which i don't have but it will still work because the original is still in good shape and everything's cleaned up you can see bores down there. If we push on this, it's free. And if we take push on the center, it now moves back and forth, which it didn't do before. So that is all together. Put the snap ring in here. That'll go in. 
see if we can get this in here without using a pliers. But I would probably need a pliers to get her in. Yeah, so that's gonna go in there. There we go. The pliers on here. Yeah, snap ring is in. Now it looks like this may hit this in here a little bit, but it's just far enough away it doesn't. And if we, that's yeah, still good, still works. Let's put this end in, it'll be all set. Yeah, you got this end, it's all cleaned up. Usually the copper washer, but this one doesn't use one. Just screw that in there. And we're all set. We're going to put some Loctite on this before we screw it and tighten it down. But to seal it up, make sure it doesn't loosen up. All right. Some Loctite in the bottom of the threads here. Before we thread it home. That good lubricant. And it seals the threads up. And it locks it in. We'll use some of that on that tin nut, too. All right, and we'll torque that down, and that's done. This piece, none of this is available, but there's a nut here. It threads out over this, but it's got, still got stuff on it. I don't want to ruin this post, this nut, or this rubber. None of this is available. So we're just going to put this on just like this. I'm going to put a piece of wire around this. Just going to go up here. Then we need our lever. It also goes on. There's our the spring. It goes on the end of the lever. It goes around this. It goes on the vehicle. And then uh, she'll be done. And then we can go test it once everything dries. All right. You put the boot on. There's our stud. So we just got some mechanics wire. Wrapped it around. Twisted it once. Keep that boot on there. I keep all the dirt and water out. And yeah, because originally when we pulled this apart, this was just hanging. This is what was left of the wire. So this is sealed up now. And then we'll put our lever on here. Now I'll have to look and see what the setting is, but I don't think, I think it's a little higher. But there is a way to set this. And we'll look into that. But that's that. And here's our washer. And then our tin nut. Which will go on like that. We got our mounted up in the vise here. Cut the lever in. So we've epoxied the nut, filled the nut with Loctite to lock that in. We have to let that set up and cure. And hopefully by tomorrow, we get this on our test stand, which is over there and hook it up and hopefully she'll work.